Hi, my name's Felicity and I work in the International Office at the University of Leicester. Today I'm going to give you a brief presentation about pre-departure planning. So this will include what to do before you arrive, how to get here and also what to do once you arrive. So hopefully this will help you get here. So where's Leicester? Leicester is located in the centre of England, so it's very close to lots of major cities and it's very easy to get to. It's about 160 kilometres from London and this takes only 63 minutes by high speed train, so very easy to make a day trip. There are also lots of airports nearby, so it's very easy to get to from overseas. The nearest airports are the East Midlands Airport and Birmingham Airports, but a lot of you will probably come through Heathrow, which is down in London. So this is our campus. As you can see, it's very compact and very easy to get around. Everything's really close together. So hopefully you won't get lost and you'll find your way almost immediately. Now, before you arrive, there are a few things you'll need to get sorted. The first thing is, if your offer is still conditional, you'll need to let us know and give us the documents that you require for, to meet the conditions. This can be done by logging into My Student Record or you can email us the documents. Also, if your offer is unconditional and you haven't yet accepted your offer, you can do this by logging into My Student Record. So let us know that you want to accept your offer and then we can send you the next information that you need. You can also upload a photograph of yourself to My Student Record and before you arrive you'll need to pay at least 50% of your tuition fees in order to be allowed to register. A few more things that you'll need to do. You'll need to check the validity of your passport. So this means you'll need at least six months left on your passport before the start date of your course. You'll need to complete online registration. This usually opens in August, at the very end of August or the beginning of September. You'll be sent some information about this by email beforehand. And also you need to think about accommodation. So you'll need to apply for accommodation, pay your deposit and make arrangements for any private accommodation if you're not staying in university accommodation. So if you do want to stay in university accommodation, you'll need to book it fairly soon, but we do guarantee places up until the 1st of September. So all students are welcome to stay in university accommodation and it's guaranteed provided that you apply before the 1st of September. There's a wide choice of rooms available. We've got undergraduate and postgraduate rooms available in our accommodation that's only about five to ten minutes walk from the campus. And then lots of undergraduate accommodation in our Oadby Student Village, which is a little bit further from campus, but there's a bus that can bring you to and from campus. If, however, you would like to stay in uh, private accommodation, the company that we, we suggest that you go through is called SU Let's or Sulets, as some people call it. This is a private company, but is run through the students' unions at the University of Leicester and the University of De Montfort. And they're a very transparent, um, open company who just help students and work with only reputable landlords. So they're a very safe company to go with. Now, one of the most important things you need to do before you arrive is apply for your visa. So hopefully we'll make this process as easy as possible for you, but there's still a lot of paperwork that will need to be done. Now, once your offer is unconditional and you firmly accepted it, you'll be sent a CAS request form. This means that you'll just need to fill it out and just confirm a few details for us. Once we receive this back, we'll apply for your CAS number and you'll receive it by email from us as soon as it's available. You can find out plenty more information about this on the website and what process you need to go through once you have your CAS number. There's information there. Obviously, every country is different, but hopefully the information we provide on the website will give you an insight into what you need to do. Now, what, what should you do before you leave? You need to take out some insurance, so personal or travel insurance. If you'll be living in university accommodation, you might want to um, purchase a bedding pack in advance or an essentials ki kitchen set. This means that when you arrive, the bedding and um, all your kitchen utensils will be there waiting for you so that you don't need to go out to a shop. If, however, you'll be arriving early in the morning on a weekday, you should have plenty of time to be able to go out to the shops and get the stuff yourself. You'll need to visit your doctor in your home country if you have any medical conditions and you might want to bring your medical notes translated into English with you to make sure that any medications that you're on can be given to you whilst you're in the UK. 
You might also wish to unlock your mobile phone or unlock your SIM card for use in the UK so that when you arrive you'll be able to get in touch with your family and keep in touch the whole time that you're here. You might also want to book onto our International Welcome Programme, which I'll tell you a bit more about in a minute. You may also want to check um, whether you need any additional vaccinations. In the UK, most people are vaccinated against a lot of basic diseases, so you may want to check whether there's anything else that you need to be vaccinated against. Now, what do you need to bring with you? This is quite important because obviously you don't want the information that you really need to be in your main suitcase that's been checked into the hold of the aeroplane. You'll want the, a lot of this in your hand luggage. So you'll need your valid passport with the visa inside and any other relevant ID cards. You'll need your travel and flight tickets, obviously. Um, I'd suggest bringing photocopies of your passport and visa pages just in case you, your passport is stolen or goes missing. You'll need to bring some passport photos and ID pictures. I also suggest bringing some money with you because obviously it may take a while to set up a bank account once you're in the UK. So bringing some cash with you, not too much, um, probably around £400 maximum just to tide you over for the first few days until you can open a bank account. Then also you want to bring any personal travel insurance details with you, uh, your University of Le Leicester offer letter and your CAS details, and also proof of your address that, of where you'll be living when you arrive in Leicester. So these are some other useful things that you might want to bring along with you. Uh, so adapter plugs. The UK uses quite a unique three pin system, so you'll need adapter plugs for most of your electronics. Um, you might want to bring a few toiletries just for the first couple of days until you're settled, but obviously most things can be bought in UK supermarkets. You'll want to bring clothing for most types of weather, so clothes for rain, cold, umbrella, jumper, that sort of thing. You'll also need to bring um, evidence of your finances, so things like bank statements or a sponsor letter if you're a sponsored student. And also bring your essential guide to starting at Leicester, which you should receive in the post or by email over the next few weeks. Now, getting to the university, this is quite important. If you're travelling to the UK from overseas, then obviously you'll need to come by aeroplane. There are a lot of non-stop flights that go into Heathrow Airport, which is in London, and most countries' major airlines will fly into Heathrow. Alternatively, if you're coming from a smaller city, you might want to fly via Europe, which can bring you into some of the smaller airports in the UK, like East Midlands and Birmingham. Some um, examples of the airlines that might do this are KLM, which um, flies via Amsterdam, or um, Lufthansa, which comes via Munich, or um, Air France, which goes via Paris. All these airlines are very reputable and will get you into Birmingham International, which is very close to the University of Leicester. Now, getting from the airport, one of the easiest routes is to get bus because this way you can just get on the bus, your luggage is safe and then you can travel to Leicester and there is no, no worry about getting on or off or transferring. Uh, there are National Express coach stations at most major airports so you'll be able to get on the bus there and get the, tr the bus into central Leicester from where you can get a taxi easily. The other option is to take the train, however this does often require you to do a change, so if you've got really heavy luggage this is probably not the best way to arrive. The other option would be to do a pre-booked airport taxi, so these taxi companies will often collect you in the arrivals area, they will take you directly to your accommodation and they'll make sure that you're safely there before leaving you. This is a slightly more expensive option but it is a very easy, safe way of doing it. Um, but all I can stress is please try not to get a taxi outside the airport that is not pre-booked as it's not always safe and it can cost a lot of money. So always pre-book your transport, it's a lot easier. You can find more information on our website about this as well. Now, once you arrive, hopefully you will arrive safely, and then when you get here, these are some of the things that you'll want to do. So obviously let your family and friends know that you arrive safely. They'll be worrying about you, so just make sure that they know that you're safe. Um, you'll want to check into your accommodation. So you'll 
obviously receive information from the university if you've booked a university accommodation of how to check in and you can let them know when you'll be arriving. If it's private accommodation, then you'll need to make separate arrangements with the landlord or agency. Now, once you've settled, you'll need to attend a visa checkpoint. Um, this is where you just come into us, show us your passport with your visa in it, and then we can register you and sort out all the documents that you'll need. You'll also want to familiarise yourself with the campus. So, you know, have a wander around, make sure you can find your department and the library and anything else that you might need or want whilst you're here. And also, for people from some countries, you may also need to do police registration. We try to make this as easy as possible and have um, police come to the campus for a few days at the beginning of term so that you don't have to um, go down to the police station to meet them. However, if you arrive late, you can just pop down to the police station and make an appointment and that would be fine. Now. There's a few more things that you need to do when you arrive. Um, you might want to buy a SIM card, a local SIM card, so that you can get cheaper calls to people in the UK. And you may, want, again, want to attend our international welcome programme, as it'll give you lots of valuable information about what to do whilst you're here and where you can get help if you have any issues. You'll also need to attend any departmental in inductions, so you should receive information about this in your welcome pack or, or by email, which will tell you where you need to be and when. You also may want to buy an NUS card once you arrive, because this can give you lots of discounts at shops around the area. And finally, you'll need to pay the remainder of your tuition fees up to three months after the start date of your course. Now, once you're, once you're here, obviously you want to make sure that you're taken care of as best as possible. So healthcare, if you're a full-time student and you're registered on a course for more than six months, you're entitled to healthcare in the UK. So there are some charges for things like dental work and prescriptions, but the majority of your care will be free at the point of contact. Um, if you need any more information, you can go on, a we on the website um, UKCISA, which we call UKISA, and that has a keeping healthy section for students that gives you plenty of information about what to do when you're here. Finance. So obviously whilst you're here, you may need to pay rent, you may want to get a part-time job, all of which will require a UK bank account to make it a bit easier. So there are bank accounts, there's a bank account on campus, Santander, and there are also plenty of other banks in the city centre. You also may want to speak to your home bank and see whether they have any links with UK banks. Um, you can also um, pay your tuition fees by electronic transfer in advance before you arrive and also you'll probably need to make sure that you have enough cash for the first few days you can do this in either cash or travelers checks just to make sure that you're covered until your bank account is opened so we have plenty of support for international students whilst you're here obviously all the same support exists that we have for home and eu students however there's a little bit extra support for international students who have different needs so, for example, we have specialist international stu student advisors who can provide you information about working in the UK, about visas, about finance. We also have the International Students Association, who are an active association group of international students who just help students out, um, arrange tours around the UK, so visits to wonderful historical sites or big cities that you can join and sometimes they even go to Europe if you're interested in that. We also have in-sessional and pre-sessional English courses that you can join. So um, the pre-sessional programmes are um, you pay for, whereas the in-sessional courses are free of charge. The International Welcome Programme. So I told you I'd tell you a little bit more about this. So the programme will start on the 18th and finish on the 22nd of September. And your main course of study will start on the 25th. The idea behind the Welcome Programme is just to give you an idea about life in the UK, give you campus tours and then information send sessions on finance, immigration, English support, things like that. We also provide city tours so that you can get to know the city and know where to go. There is also a social events programme which is obviously really important so that you can get to know other students and sort of meet lots of new friends. 
There is accommodation available during this week at a slight extra cost, but it means that at least you can stay in accommodation for the whole time that you're here. We'll also be doing an airport pickup from Heathrow. Um, the date is likely to be the 17th of September, but this has not been confirmed yet. So keep an eye on the website and hopefully the information will be up very soon. And also bookings for the International Welcome Programme will be available from July and August. Um, some things will be available from July, some from August, and you can book on to different events, different sessions to make sure that you get make the most of the week. Right. So. If you have any more questions, obviously we're happy for you to contact us. Um, the international office contact details are here and we're happy for you to email or call us at any time. We also have a lot of online chat sessions, so you feel free to go to the website and log on to one of the chat sessions. We also have a country pages section, which gives more detailed information about specific countries. There are also a couple of other web external websites that you might find useful. So the, as I said before, the UKISA website, and there's Education UK, which is the British Council run website, and also a travel and transport website that you might find very useful. So finally, we'll be running a series of pre-departure briefings, chat sessions online. You should have received an invite by email to these sessions. So feel free to log on, ask us any questions that you have, and our staff will be really happy to answer your questions.